Well, one hot topic when it comes to college athletics that has surfaced, at least this part of the country, has been Big 12 expansion. It looks like as many as four teams could be a part of this league as early as next season. Don't be surprised if a decision comes down as early as November as far as who those four teams are going to be. Of course, before I go any further, there's no question that the Big 12, at least from the nationwide perspective, has looked like a joke, okay? And, you know, rightfully so. This is a conference that's, you know, lost four members over the past few seasons, Nebraska, Colorado, a and m and Missouri. And by the way, I know that they added TCU in West Virginia. Had an opportunity, though, recently to invite Louisville to join the conference. Instead, the Cardinals, you know, they're not complaining at all. They joined the ACC. And again, I don't think they're complaining one bit. But Big 12 had a chance to get Louisville, number one um, men's basketball program in terms of profitability. That would have also, too, been great to have Louisville maybe a robbery in men's basketball with Kansas. I think that would have been tremendous. And, by the way, at the time, they had one of the newest stadiums in football in Papa John Stadium, a nice stadium. So why the Big 12 didn't pursue Louisville is beyond me, and I think they'll regret that uh, for the rest of the conference's existence. But moving to the future now, many as four teams – um, could be added to the Big 12. And again, that would go into effect next season, believe it or not. Look at the candidates that the Big 12 could be pursuing. Obviously, the big one, the one that, to me, is the only guarantee that will add validity to your conference is BYU, Brigham Young. And that is because it's an established traditional football program, um, has its own TV network. But big thing is that they're – Fan base is a nationwide fan base because of the Mormon church. So I think BYU is a virtual guarantee that it will actually add validity to the conference. Of course, the downfall is that they don't participate in athletics of any kind on Sundays. I think it's one of those things. Don't be surprised if BYU becomes a football-only Big 12 school. And I don't think the Big 12 would have any objection to that if the only sport they participate in was football. Got to add BYU because it will add credibility to the league. Now, there are some other candidates to look at, and there's going to be pros and cons. I think the second candidate you got to add is Cincinnati. Uh, the Bearcats, um, I think number one, TV market size. It's, it's, a, it's a good TV market size. I think it's like top 25, top 30 in the country. Add them. And, you know, the one thing, too, that you're looking as far as Big 12 schools is proximity in West Virginia. I'm sure the, the one thing that they hate is happen to travel, you know, travel Timbuktu to go to every Big 12 school. At least with Cincinnati, it gives you some sort of uh, close proximity co in comparison to the other nine schools that are in the league. So I think West Virginia would definitely be on board for that. And, you know, Cincinnati's uh, football program, at least in the last few years, um, went to a major bowl. In fact, they went to a couple of uh, major bowls. Um, in the late uh, 2000s or early 2010s. Houston is another candidate that I think, if, if you're going to expand to four teams, um, making it 14 total for the league, I think Houston um, needs to be taken seriously. Who knows how good the football program will be several years from now, but you have to understand something. If you don't have the, the, the football tradition, you know, which Houston for the most part doesn't, you need to be thinking about as many people that are going to be glued to the television, that the, the, the large audience that you could have when it comes to a particular uh, Big 12 candidate. And Houston's got the fourth biggest television market size in the country. You can't ignore that. Um, so I think Houston um, will, will definitely um, add more in terms of the – number of eyes glued to TV sets. And the disadvantage, of course, of having Houston and Cincinnati for that part is that they both are in cities that already have NFL franchises. Difficult for the Cougars and Bearcats to compete with the Texans and the Bengals, respectively. You, you, know, you may not have too much of a problem getting people to watch the games in those large TV market sizes, but getting them to go to the games if the team is not playing particularly well could be another issue. But that's, I guess, one of the risks you have to take. And I think the pros outweigh the cons with Houston and Cincinnati. And if there's going to be a fourth school to add, um, I really you know, diagnose this closely, Memphis, okay? 
And I think the biggest reason for Memphis is because of corporate sponsors. And there are plenty in the Memphis area that would make um, their, um, their Tigers as attractive as possible and bring as much money as possible. FedEx, um, I think, would be could be a terrific corporate sponsor uh, for the uh, Memphis program. And I think that that's one thing you got to take a look at is that they could bring in plenty of money uh, for the Big 12. Of course, the, the biggest con is, you know, I know last year Memphis was, was decent in football. Of course, um, you know, Justin Puente is now at Virginia Tech. So you really wonder um, about the uh, stability of their particular program. I think, and of course, Memphis, you know, TV market size is in the top 50. In fact, I think they're like 45th, and they have the same, if not very close, TV market size to Oklahoma City. So uh, that doesn't hurt either. Now, there are other programs that you're going to hear about that could be good for the Big 12, but I don't think you should um, put any of the following into the Big 12. Connecticut, okay? Obviously, they're strong when it comes to academics, and we know how good in basketball they are, especially women's basketball. They're giants, okay? And that might be even another reason why you shouldn't bring them in because they're going to slaughter uh, virtually everybody with maybe the exception of Baylor, but Connecticut would be the overwhelming favorite to uh, win the Big 12 in women's basketball every year. I mean, they could graduate everybody, and Gina Oriyama could take 12 players that have never played in the collegiate level and still make them into a national champion. UConn is just that above and beyond everybody else, and especially above and beyond everybody else in the Big 12. Um, but football-wise, they're a mediocre program. Um, Academic-wise, they would add plenty, and of course, um, not too far from New York either. The TV market size would be decent, but I, again, I don't think UConn does anything at all to help your conference in football at all. In fact, I think it waters it down. Um, when you're looking at another program, uh, talking about um, Colorado State, um, not the deepest college football tradition, but I do think if Memphis um, did not get an invite to join the league or decline, I can't imagine them declining if they get offered, I think the next one in line should be Colorado State. Um, they are investing in a $200 million uh, stadium project on campus. Um, of course, not far either from the Denver TV market, top 10 in the country. And that's the thing, you know, these university presidents are going to be looking at tradition. Uh, they're going to be looking at how many butts you can put in the seat. But I think the biggest thing, too, is TV market size because you want it to be in an area where there are lots of televisions that have an opportunity to watch Big 12 action. And if you've got a team of cl close proximity in an um, area where you have large TV audiences, there's opportunity right there. I think Colorado State, um, from that perspective, uh, would be the way to go if Memphis or any of the other candidates um, don't fall into the Big 12 expansion mix. Um, but again, I think what hurts Colorado State, uh, not much in the way of a football tradition. All they're, they're kind of an unknown in that regard. Um, believe it or not, question. Who's got the largest undergraduation enrollment in the country? Believe it or not, it's Central Florida. I keep hearing that name pop up, too. They're a top 20 TV market. But in football, they absolutely suck. If you don't believe me, look at their record last year, 0-12. That should be automatic disqualification right there. And, of course, there's that school in the northwest part of the country called Boise State. And we know that they've been to several uh, major bowls and have done quite well in them. And of course, we know what they did uh, 10 years ago in the Fiesta Bowl to my Sooners, okay? So as far as um, you know, football success, they had instant football success. Last year, of course, they lost four games. And it's really unproven how the Broncos are going to do in the post-Chris Peterson era. Last year, they weren't a bad football team, but nothing like what we've seen in the past. So you do face that possibility that maybe uh, the program, I'm not saying sucks, but maybe can never get back to that high level level of play that we've seen in previous seasons. So, you know, the post-Chris Pearson era, I think it remains to be seen what they can do, even on the level they're on right now, let alone the Big 12 Conference. So, I, I don't think, and of course, their TV market size is ridiculously small, and I, I, I think that they're, that's a trap, and you don't want to get involved um, in that at the moment. And there's other candidates out there, but those are the ones that, that come to mind right away. Uh, if you're asking me if you put a gun to my head right now and saying what should the Big 12 do, I think, first of all, um, probably just dissolve altogether. I think that's what's going to happen 10 years from now because of the fact that the ACC and ESPN, by the way, um, it looks like it's going to happen. There's going to be some sort of a, you know, 
ACC network. And that I'm hearing is going to be extremely long term all the way into the year 2036, 2037. Remember, the Big 12's um, contract with ESPN expires in 2024. And I think at about that time, so does um, the Longhorn Network. Their deal with ESPN expires at about the same time. And ESPN may not even um, ex um, extend their contract with the Big 12. And if that happens, if ESPN um, basically does not um, continue to put their eggs in the basket for the Big 12 and they continue to be a part of the ACC network, I think you're going to see the Big 12 dissolve. And I think if either Texas or Oklahoma decides to leave, there is no Big 12 at all. And if it is, it ain't going to be anything special. And I think you're going to see super conferences in the year 2025, four super conferences. I just don't think the Big 12 is going to last. But in the meantime, while it does last, the four candidates, if you put a gun to my head right now and said, who are they going to be? BYU for sure, Cincinnati, Houston, and Memphis. Again, that's just my opinion, so please don't take it to the bank. It's not the gospel. It's not a guarantee. But Memphis, Cincinnati, um, Houston, and especially BYU are the four that I think you should expand. And again, that would start as early as next year. It's going to be intriguing uh, these next few months. And I'm sure there are other candidates out there. So please, you know, say, why didn't you include Tulane? I know Tulane has terrific academics as well. And they're within that Big 12 geographic proximity. But football-wise, I, I don't think they, they exactly pack the stadium. I don't think that they add uh, much at all in terms of credibility to this league. And again, football is the big money maker. Uh, keep that in mind. That's my look at the Big 12 as far as the future, as far as candidates out there. Um, I'd love to get your thoughts. Please leave a comment or you can send me a tweet at uh, hashtag DanR56. See you next time.